Have you ever heard a bodybuilder say through the grapevine, like, you know what really made a difference to my physique? No. I do. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it brings us to uh, the next best thing. Those are the IGF-1, LR3, and this. Uh, I've used plenty of IGF-1, LR3. Got some decent results out of it. Mm, seems to go well and less well from brand to brand, batch to batch. I don't know if that's a shipping thing. I don't know if that's a production thing. I don't know if that's a sourcing thing. Um, but I still got more, all things considering, of the like the 12 different brands of IGF-1 LR3 that I've tried. I always got some sort of results compared to IGF-1 DES, which every time I tried that, I got nothing. Yep. Um, and I, But I do know people that swear by it. What has your experience been? Yep, that's what I, same thing, right? But even LR3 is not, I don't know, it's hit or miss. Yeah. Most guys don't really, they get a bottle and then they don't ever buy another bottle of it. Yeah. It's because, at least in the US, it's doctors can loosely prescribe it, kind of. Mm -hmm. and that might have changed with the recent peptide laws. But um, again, it was, it was, doctors could prescribe it for wellness where they could not prescribe Incrolux. Right. So it was one of those ways to work around the GH, IGF thing. Have you ever heard a bodybuilder say in the through the grapevine, like, you know what really made a difference to my physique? No. IGF? No. no. <laughs> or MK677 for that matter. Um, I never heard it. <laughs> no. But like I've heard plenty of bodybuilders say, like, dude, when I ramped up the growth hormone from 6 yes. IUs to 12 IUs, holy fucking dog shit. I was mutated. That first hand. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That, to me, was the most dramatic thing ever, was just ramping up the growth hormone and using yeah. the growth hormone. Exactly. So, Dean, Dean, do you have some experience with IGF-1 LR3 or DES? Not or personally. clients that use it? Okay. Uh, clients have used LR3 and like Kurt said, you know, really depends on the source. Now, uh, the source that I'd be associated or affiliated with, I've seen it produce some good results. So, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, it... It's one of those ones like w why it was created was because of that long release. So you only have to take a small dose and you got that yeah. extended IGF-1. And obviously then that's reliant on, well, how high is IGF-1 binding protein going to go for, because this thing is hanging around your system for quite a period of time. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not something like Incrinex, IGF-1, DES or LR3. I've not used them myself, so I can't say I, this is how I've experienced, but I've seen you know, 50 micrograms of LR3 bilaterally used in guys I've coached to have seen, you know, marginal results in terms of like localized growth of biceps or quads where it's been been placed. But again, it comes down to the source, I guess, and the cost. Mm -hmm. So in my own blood work, I've tested IGF-1, LR3, DES, Incrolex, all the one milligram servings, two and a half hours before testing. Only Incrolex increases serum levels of IGF-1 and binding protein. Um, so you run it for a week, right? One milligram per day for a week and see what happens. Only I Incrolex really raises serum levels and exogenous growth hormone and exogenous melatonin. But IGF-1 LR3 or DES, it doesn't make a difference on your blood work. And when you look at the medical insert of Incrolex, like the recommendations for kids, are in the milligram servings. Yeah. That's why the bottle micrograms. is 40. Micrograms, no, mi 250 yeah. micrograms twice per a day. Kilogram. Per, per kilogram. Per kilogram of uh, body weight. Yeah. So if you're 40 kilos, this brings it to milligram dosages. And in order to oh, raise serum would. levels significantly, you need to use milligrams of the shit. And anybody that has access to Incrolex can test it at his home. You do, uh, you know, you take a decent dose of growth hormone where IGF-1 levels go up, then take one milligram in Incrolex and test it two and a half hours later. It goes up with a couple of points, but it's not that much substantially. It's maybe 100 to 200 points. Yeah. Well, we found in HIV that when compared head to head, Incrolex versus GH, Saristim, the mm -hmm. Saristim is more effective at raising IGF and systemic growth than, yeah. you know, than IGF was. So again, but, I would just go back to the growth hormone. Yeah. And what I honestly think with the peptide websites is that most of the IGF-1 LR3 and DES labeled as one milligram is actually 100 micrograms. That's why when I say I got good results, that's a vial a day. 
And is that 100 micrograms or one milligram? I'm not entirely sure, but if it doesn't really raise levels on blood work because yeah, IGF-1 and R3 or this can be detected when you get some sort of receptor um, you know, interaction. You know, I, I ran, I, I recently got a batch of IGF-1 and R3 uh, through one of my sources, one milligram per day. So I'm like, you know what, I'll take this on rest days. So I took it the day after leg day, Wednesday, Saturday, one milligram sub-Q in the morning. And you do feel fuller at the end of the day. Um, now, would I spend $70 per day to feel fuller? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So um, I, I think your mileage might vary a lot, but I have no problem putting both of these in F tier. Yep, I'm with you. I hate to say it. But, you know, if you have access to other stuff, I think you get better results from high-dose growth from them. I, yeah, I mean, test, if you can't grow on test and growth, real growth hormone, mm -hmm. ain't the sport for you. Yeah. LR3, G1, this. I'm biting myself in the old foot here because many of my affiliates have IG1, LR3, and this, but no Increlex. <laughs> so I'm cutting into my own sales. Shit. Yeah, well, it is what it is. That's the, the, the cost of honesty. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I Yeah. Could IGF-1 LR3 be better than injectable secretagogs, though? Um, probably not. Not if the secretagogs used correctly. Because the, the secretagogs raise IGF-1 levels more yeah. than I see anecdotally on IGF-1 LR3 yeah. or this. I would go with the secretagog in that case. And it's also significantly cheaper. I, I think MK677 beats out LR3 <laughs> and this. Which is sad, right? Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Oh, all the kids are rejo all the storm but goblins again, are rejoicing. You know, I've said this about other things, and I guess you could apply it here. If a lot of these things were effective or efficient to use, there'd be pharmaceutical drugs. Like True. You, those big pharmaceutical giants are very aware of everything that's on the market that bodybuilders use. If they found that one of these random SARMs or something actually was worth using, they would have bought the rights to it already. They wouldn't be selling it at <laughs> yeah. a supplement store. They'd be good keeping the shit out of it. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> you know, same with growth hormone. If there was an effective, cheaper way to make it, and you could throw all these other fillers in it, and that was effective, they would do that too because it's cheaper to manufacture. You, th you think, you know, you think Saristim wants to spend that much money manufacturing it? They don't have a choice. It's the only way to make it effective. Right. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a certain... Um, you know, a, a, a finesse in the delivery mechanism, yeah. um, which can be replicated by generics. And again, I, I see, you know, saving yourself some money on pharma in the off season by using generics and then going by vials and not by IUs. Okay, it's fine. Right? Again, well, no. we're talking about big boy cycles here. Um, I, we're all into big boy cycles. Well, maybe not Dean. Dean is a little bit risk averse, but you're a big boy <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> so, so I'm running a vial of generics on chest day and two vials on leg day, and it seems to be working. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably get away with five. I use pharma and ten. I use yeah. pharma on on leg day. You know. Yeah, I get more but, on nine. I use a serostim than I ever done on eighteen units of known generics. I should make that switch soon. Going from. 20 I use generic to like 18 I use serostim. See what happens. Big difference. And like I think every so. day, you look different every day. That was, I mean, that was the thing that Chase was totally right about when he first did this stuff. Yeah. Like you wake up in the morning, you look different. Every day you look different. I wonder and how many vials of generics you would need to get that effect. I Four. don't know. It's probably because absorption is the rate limit. So there's probably yeah. a point where it's just not getting absorbed. Right. So you're just wasting it at that point. And how Kinda many lumps like do you want in your stomach? Exactly. Or MVP. <laughs> I mean, how many, like, how many, how many lumps do you want all over your body? Yeah. Did you get a lot of shit for that, Kurt? About the Cipionet study? Well, I didn't, that I didn't publish used. it yet. So it just, but I mean, that's the original, yeah. the data that we're, we have so far shows that the peak serum and anthic is much higher. People get upset, man. I, the I, there's no emotion in science. It is what it is. I know, I know. <laughs> we see people get upset for classifying uh, IGF on R3 and F tier. People like, get upset we, about yeah. what I said about halo testing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's all sorts of hateful videos about me now. I just don't watch. Oh, yeah. 